This is the moment many college athletes live for, winning a championship. But what the public doesn't often see is what happens behind the scenes. Former San Jose State gymnast Kendall Ginda knows firsthand it's anything but shiny. And now, almost a decade later, what she went through at SJSU still haunts her. I remember just thinking, maybe I can just drive to the San Francisco Bridge because I know people die there and it's probably the quickest place to die. Ginda said she was mentally and verbally abused by her former head coach, Wayne Wright. We spoke with 13 former SJSU gymnasts who all echoed the same message, that they were failed by the very system put in place to protect them. Gymnasts told us Wright referred to girls on the team as, quote, whorish for wearing jeans with holes in them, called them bad girls if they talked to football players, and said he created a group called the Breakfast Club, reserved for gymnasts he didn't think were in shape. According to one gymnast, some of the women in the group have since developed eating disorders. It's a systemic problem within the NCAA. And I think what we went through at San Jose State was very severe. Um, but I've heard similar stories of abuse within the NCAA. Amy LeClaire was a gymnast under Wright from 2012 to 2016. Of the 13 former gymnasts we spoke to, all but one said since leaving the program, they've struggled with mental illness or an eating disorder. I ended up seeing a doctor a couple, about a year or so ago, and I was diagnosed with PTSD. I was actually diagnosed with OCD. I was so horrifically abused that that, the mentality that I gained from that place is what put me into the hospital. San Jose State denied our request for an on-camera interview and instead gave us a statement reading in part, quote, that investigation concluded on May 24th, 2018. Mr. Wright, who was employed pursuant to an employment contract, separated from the university effective July 9th, 2018, with an agreement to not seek or accept employment and not volunteer with the university in the future. The statutory protections for mental health should be equivalent to the same protections for physical health. Scott Herndon is the principal of Scott Herndon Law in Berkeley. He says it's time for the NCAA to put pen to paper and make a serious change in the rule book. The NCAA has been on notice for years that, that co college athletes are being mistreated. It's time to change that. The NCAA has made changes to better support athletes' mental health over the years. But the disparities between supporting an athlete's physical health and mental health once they've left campus are still glaring. According to NCAA rules, Division I universities must provide medical care for athletes with an athletic-related injury for up to two years after they leave or graduate. According to that same rule, each university will get to decide if an injury is athletically related, if care is necessary, and if so, how that care will be provided. There are no rules for former athletes' mental health protections. The gymnasts say they know this all too well. What a college athlete goes through can very well affect the rest of their life. LeClaire is proof. Life Insurance Company of North America denied LeClaire, now a mother of two, supplemental life insurance. The company claims they denied her coverage because of postpartum depression with hospitalization. But LeClaire believes her depression originally stems from the bullying and verbal abuse she suffered while at San Jose State. I'm still in therapy. Um, I was hospitalized. I was in rehab. So just financially, what we're looking at is well into the six figures. That lack of support was almost literally the difference between life and death for athletes like Ginda. I definitely had severe depression and anxiety. Um, had a lot of suicidal thoughts. She gave up her scholarship and left the gymnastics program a year early. She says the dehumanizing treatment was simply not worth another year of free education. I do think that Wayne and San Jose State played a huge role in, in my failure. Ginda said she suffered from chronic back injuries. She and other gymnasts said instead of seeing San Jose State medical staff, Wright repeatedly sent them to an off-campus doctor to examine injuries. The other 13 women we spoke to made similar claims against Wright. I had um, a stress fracture in my shin and I would try to tell him and he would accuse me of lying. And eventually I had to go see a doctor in secret who told me that my shin was going to split in half if I didn't stop training. Wright arrived at San Jose State in 1993, where he spent seven years as an assistant coach before leading the program for 17 years. 
In that time, he won three MPSF championships, made seven NCAA regional championship appearances, and led his gymnast to break every team and individual record set at the university since 2004. Why would you question a team that was winning? You win it. But that winning came with an unimaginable price tag. In 2018, the athletic department opened an investigation into Wright. These are the public records detailing the investigation. Most of the information was redacted, but what wasn't paints a dark picture. The university says they interviewed over 30 people. After completing the investigation, the university agreed with the women. According to the records, the university says their greatest concern was Wright's disregard for the health and safety of his team, the academic process, use of inappropriate terms to describe female athletes, his dishonesty during the investigation, and his creation of an environment of fear, intimidation, and lack of respect. But Wright was not fired. Instead, he retired from San Jose State. He's still receiving a nearly $34,000 state pension. Colleges should be invested in the minds of their student athletes. That's their mission and their goal. None of the women we spoke to are able to take legal action. The statute of limitations in cases like these is typically no longer than two years. The women say what was supposed to be an exciting four-year chapter turned into a horror story that won't be erased with a lawsuit or a settlement check. No money is ever going to take away the experience or feeling like I want to jump off a bridge and die. No money is ever going to change that. Today, many of the women we spoke to, including Amy and Allison, are in therapy to unlearn what they say was nailed into their heads for four years. Kendall Ginda is about to welcome her first child and is not in therapy. Many of the women we spoke to say they're not ready to publicly discuss what they went through.